Hello, good evening. I'm Big Two, our lecturer, uh, Dr. Kim Chai Today, uh, we are going to present on the group assignment 2 for managerial business analytics. So, uh, our group so our group consists of two people, which is me, my name is Nur Shamira Bila Binti Samsuri, and my other partner, which is Nur Ain Shaira Binti Abu Bakar. Okay. We will uh, move to the question for the uh, this assignment group 2. Okay, the question is to formulate a linear program to the problem above to determine the optimal product mix for each day's production. Okay, for the first question, uh, which is uh, first we need to co uh, construct a, co a constraint equation which is x1 equal to 4 ply x2 equal to fiberglass and x3 equal to radial. So next uh, I will next is the objective function uh, which is uh, to maximize the profit and subjected to uh, the equation of constraint of modeling, constraint of curing and also constraint of assembly. Okay. So for the next question is uh, to run the QM window for the above problem. This is the result for the QM window. And it, this is the range table which we will interpret uh, at the next question. Okay, as for this uh, question 2A, this is uh, where we need to uh, determine the uh, initial feasible solution. Okay, a basic feasible solution is a solution with the smallest number of non-zero variables in linear programming theory. To define a uh, BFS, we first present the linear program in the so-called equational form. Okay, this is uh, the equation form which is uh, also similar with the previous uh, question. But uh, in this question, there are initial feasible solutions where x1 equal to x2 equal to x3 equal to 0. And um, for the select variables, this is where 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 4x3 plus x1 which is stand for select uh, is equal to 12 which stands for constraint of modeling. And same goes to the constraint of curing constraint, and also constraint of assembly where um, there are also select 2 and also select 3 which is select 1 uh, equal to 12, select 2 equal to 14 and select 3 equal to 16 ok for the question C uh, which is to interpret the result using the sensi sensitivity analysis ok under this uh, result there will be the there will consist of changing objective function changing of the right hand side this is uh, where the um, value in of the is where it consists uh, the value of the original value, lower and upper value, which will affect the dual value, and dual value will also be affected when the amount of variable of x one, x two, and x three will change. Okay, when the original value uh, change, but it's still in the range between lower and upper value, therefore the dual value will remain the same. And the dual value is still valid. Okay. Um, so uh, there we also uh, adding a constraint. Okay. Um, in this um, based on the table uh, from where we run for the QM window, uh, the the uh, ranging table there will be state the dual value for each constraint which is s1 s2 and s3 in the decision variable so in the column of the original value um, it is the original value of a profit earned for each constraint other than that the table also show the lower and upper bound to check whether the amount of x1 x2 and s3 is the optimal solution for the firm or not and the original value must be uh, in between of lower and upper bound Okay, under this uh, table also, we need to uh, look at the select uh, value. Okay, for the for the lower side, it is called as binding constraint. Binding constraint is the value that is satisfied optimal solution. And this is where uh, in the constraint 1 and 2, the value of uh, in this column is 0, which the 
and while the function 3, the value is uh, 6. Uh, the value of slack. Okay, this show that uh, constraint, constraint 3 does not fully utilize the resources since the slacks uh, in the column uh, of slack that are value of 6. Why uh, the function 1 and 2 has fully utilized the resources which is 12 and 14 respectively. Since the slack value is 0, so it's considered uh, uh, the constraint uh, fully utilized the resources. Okay, uh, for the original value, um, overall we can see that uh, constraint 1, constraint 2, and um, also constraint, constraint 3, and the uh, original value is um, is between the upper and lower boundary. So, uh, so since uh, it is between the upper and lower boundary, the all the constraint is considered as the uh, optimal solution. Okay, next I will pass to uh, the uh, the next presenter. Hi, good morning. My name is Noor Anshayira binti Abu Bakar. Now I'm going to proceed the presentation with the next questions, which is questions number three. So in these questions, we have three sub-questions, 3A, B, and C. Okay, so let's start with the first questions, 3A. This question is about what happens to the profit when we change the modeling hours from 12 to 13 hours. So the answer is, the total profit increases will be just the same like before, which is there will be increase $1.5 for each additional hour. This is because when we change the modeling hours from 12 hours to 13 hours, that 13 hours is still in between the lower and upper bound. So the lower bound here is 9.33 and the upper bound is 28. So therefore, we can see that 13 hours is still in between 9.33 and 28. So that's why uh, the original dual value, which is $1.5, is still valid and can be used to calculate the new profit. So to, cal to calculate the new Sorry, so to calculate the new total profit, the first step is we need to use that $1.5 times with the additional hour that we take. So the additional hour is one hour. So therefore, that $1.5 times with one hour so that we can, uh, we can identify the total profit increases. $1.5 times with one hour equal to $1.5. That means any additional one hour will increase $1.5. So now we're going to calculate the total new profit. So the calculation will be total profit before plus with the extra profit that we get just now. So the total profit before is $32 while the new additional profit that we get just now is $1.5. So therefore, our new total profit is $33.5. As we all know, the dual value is the shadow price, which is $1.5 per hour of production. Therefore, we could pay as much as $1.5 in order to increase our production capabilities. Now, moving on to the next questions, which is 3B. This question is just like the previous questions. It is about what happens to the profit when we change the process hour. So for these questions, um, the process hours that has been, has been changed is the assembly hour, um, which is we change the assembly hour from 16 to 17 hours. So the total profit is increased um, is still the same, which is there will be increase of zero dollars. Um, for the explanation, that is because 17 hours is still in between the lower and upper bound. So the lower bound here is 10, 
while the upper bound is infinity. So therefore, even even the assembly hours has been changed to 17 hours, that 17 is still in between 10 and infinity. So therefore, the original dual value is still valid. That $0 is still valid and um, it is the profit increase when we add any additional hour. To calculate the new total profit, the first step is um, we use the same step just before, which is $0, the original dual value, the $0 times with the additional hour that we take, which is one hour, then the answer is $0. $0 means um, any additional hour will increase zero profit. To calculate the total new profit is um, by using the total profit before plus with the any additional profit that we get just now. So the total profit before is $32 while the additional profit that we get just now is zero. So therefore, our new total profit is $32. The shadow price for the assembly constraint is zero. Um, it means that uh, it is not possible, it is not profitable to pay for the any additional assembly hour because there are no profit for us. Now we're going to proceed with the next questions, which is 3C. In these questions, we are going to discuss about the relationship between the shadow price and the slack variable. What is shadow price? Shadow price is the maximum price that the company should pay so that the company will get the additional profit that they are targeted, that they have target. Okay, so um, when we want to identify the shadow price, we are going to look at the dual price. That is the maximum price that the sh company should pay to get their profit. Um, for the dual value, we are going to look from constraint 1. The constraint 1, the dual value is $1.5. Constraint 2 has the dual value of $1, $1. And the constraint 3 has the dual value of $0. So therefore, we are going to, uh, we have identified that constraint 1 has the highest dual value which is $1.5. It means that constraint 1 can give the highest profit to the firm. So it means that any additional hour for constraint 1 will increase the highest profit for the company. Now we're going to discuss about the slack and surplus column. For constraint 1, constraint 1 and 2, the, the surplus and the slack and surplus value is zero. It means that constraint one and two has been fully utilized. There is no loss and there is no waste happened. Um, but it is different with constraint three. The constraint three, the slack surplus here is six. It means that there is a waste happen for constraint three because it is not fully utilized. So from this shadow price and the, the slack surplus have column. So from these two things, which is the dual value or we call as the shadow price and the slack and surplus column, we can identify which constraint is the best for the company to focus on. So we can see here the highest dual value or shadow price is constraint one which is $1.5, while the for the slack and surplus, the best one is constraint 1 and 2. When we compare these three, um, it is concluded that the best constraint is constraint 1 because it has the highest dual value and at the same time, the slack surplus value is 0. It means that it is fully utilized. So in conclusion, in other conclusion, constraints such that corresponding slack variable has zero value in the optimal solution have non-zero shadow price. 
part constraints such that the corresponding slack variable has non-zero value in the optimal solution has zero shadow price. So that's all for me, from me and Shamini. Thank you so much.